All right then. So now we're ready to paint this in Substance Painter. So first of all, let's just make sure we've cleaned this scene up and we've got it all organized. So I'm gonna to go to the layer editor again and I'm gonna select all this stuff and just make sure that is in the trim sheet. So right click that and add selected objects. And then I'm gonna select this ATM and right click the machine and add selected objects so that we can turn this on and off. Now let us re-export the trim pane. So VM trim tile. So I'm just gonna actually copy that, make sure I've got the name of it there. I'm gonna vial export selection and I've got a port folder set up here called painter and I'm just going to save that as trim tile. Now I wanna select everything else. So I just want all this detail. So I'll make sure that I've just got it selected. I'm just gonna isolate it. Okay, and then I wanna export that. And I wanna export this as an FBX as well. And the reason I want to export it as an FPX is because we've got this vertex data in it, which is the different colors we've set up here. And we need that uh, so that we can save that out as a map. So I'm going to go to VM trim tile and I'm just going to put high there. So this is the high poly. And then we can jump into Substance Painter. We want to start a new document and we want to select our trim tile and we want it set up as Unreal Engine 4. Okay. And then just check over this and make sure it's all come in correctly. So your UV tile should look like that, one-to-one -one with no gaps. You shouldn't have any other textures, sets than your original one, which is Lambert one material. So I'm happy with that. Now we can go to texture set settings and we can come down to bake mesh maps here. And then let's set that to, let's leave it on 512 for now so we can do a test bake and it doesn't take too long. We can load in our high poly, which is the trim tile high. And then I'm going to turn up the front distance. So this is going to set a cage around that plane. And obviously our details that we want to bake down are quite, quite extruded away from that plane. So we need to make sure that there's enough distance in the cage to capture that. So I'm just going to turn this up a little bit and turn this up a tiny bit in case I've done anything that's passing through the bottom of there as well. I'm going to capture all them faces. Now I also want to make sure that in ID map, we change it from material color to vertex color because that's what we applied the colors in there. Okay, and then let's do a quick test bake on that. So we can see our various pieces appearing here. Okay, so it looks like we've not got any of these top details in. So that's probably because of our mesh cage. Mesh cage. So again, let's go back to mesh maps here. So that's probably why I didn't read it properly. I've actually increased the rear distance massively, but not the front. So I'm just gonna switch that over. Easy fix, bake that. Now you can see our details all appear incorrectly. So I'm just gonna have a quick scan over this and make sure that there's no flat spots. All right, so once we're happy with that, we can jump back into here and increase this big mesh maps. So I'm gonna turn this up to 2K and I'm also gonna increase the uh, subsampling to four by four, just to make sure that any jagged edges are as clean as they can be. And I'll bake that. Okay, so we have our map baked here, but there's a couple of things that we need to address, and that is our uh, stretching of some of the materials here. So what Substance Painter does, it takes the normal value and then it stretches it out. Uh, and that is with all the materials it does that with. And this just makes sure that if the map resolution changes, when we have any bleed, you don't get odd angles. It kind of gives a little bit of, of leeway and softens out some of that details. But this isn't really any good for us for this stuff because we wanna be able to cut these out neatly and we wanna get a nice alpha map from that. And to do that, we have gotta get rid of this. So we can do that by going down to bait mesh maps here again, and we can remove the dilation width from this and then we can rebate those. So we can use this now to grab alphas around the edge of this. However, you know, you will see that they're quite jagged edges. So we're gonna to have to paint our edges of our alphas a little bit neater than this, just so that we can avoid some of them jagged edges. But we've made the edges of our little uh, things that we want alphas for quite a lot bigger than where we will actually put the alpha to give us plenty of room to play with here anyway. So that is really doesn't matter. Okay, so let's start separating these into different groups. And uh, so I'm gonna to go to layers here and I'm just gonna make a few folders and I'm gonna run through the different materials that I want. So I've got one for Chrome, I want dark metal, painted metal, plastic, screen, and I'm going to put one on for 
uh, metal decals. And I'll leave it as that for now. So we can come into these folders and we can put some base colors in some. So I'm just going to add a fill and then I'm going to drag it and drop it into there. And you can name your stuff to make sure it stays uh, easily browsable because as you start layering these up, it will get a bit confusing. So it's well worth uh, just making sure that you name stuff as you go. So for the Chrome base, I'm just going to change the roughness value up and I'm going to change it to metallic. And then I'm going to put dark metal in this one. So again, do a fill. metal base and I could do this one at metallic but I want this to kind of have almost a patina on it which any kind of patina or surface dirt or anything like that or metal will make it non-metallic so I'm going to kind of keep it more like this and I'm going to give it an ever so slight blue tint to this as well so painted metal you know that we want this to be kind of an orange at the moment. Might change that later on. And we don't want the roughness very high at all. So I'm going to drop a different environment into this so that we can see this a little bit better. Uh, and it's a bit more neutral. So I'm going to go in and either use Studio 5 or Studio Tomoko. Tomoko, sorry. And that gives a good representation of the lights in our scene. It's a bit more neutral as well. And it also has down lights as well, so a bit nicer. Could also use Studio 5, which is a little bit brighter. But this one will do. Okay. So plastic, very low roughness, and a kind of grey. And maybe a little bit of blue to this. So the screen, I'm going to turn that to almost a full black. Turn the roughness right up for that. And then the metal decals. So this can be an absolute neutral gray. The mid rough. Right, so we've got our different base colors. Now we can separate them onto our different things here. Now, because we made this uh, ID map here, so we can look at this ID map. That's baked our colors that we applied in Maya into this uh, ID map here. So it means that we can use color selections to make some sets. So if we come back to layers here, this is the reason I put all these in groups because then we can apply the selection sets to the groups, leaving us free to do what we want inside them groups. So let's just go and hide all these at the moment. Start with Chrome. I'm going to right click this. I'm going to click on add mask with color selection. Now in the color selection box here, we have a pick color. So this is Chrome. So we're going to come over here and I'm just going to select our light gray and that'll apply it just to the light gray sections. So if we come back onto our material here, we can see that Chrome is now selected just them light sections. So if we just close the Chrome and come back up to the next one, Dark Metal, and turn that on, we can right click that, add Color Master Selection, go to Pick Color, and then we want to select our Dark Metal. I can't remember which one our Dark Metal was. I think it's this one. Yep, okay. And then next we've got Painted Metal. So again, Color Selection, Plastic, seems we have a bit of a problem here. The plastic and the dark metal were a bit too similar in color in my ID map. So 
what I'm going to do is just change that in Maya and then rebate that. So for the plastic, I'm going to pick something very different. And then I can come back into the texture set settings, go to bait mesh maps, and I want to deselect everything but ID map. Maybe that's vertex color, and then bait that. So then we can jump back into our layers, jump in back, back to our plastic, and then select just that color. There we go. So you can see that's really easy and fast to update. There's no problem at all. And then we want our screen. So here you can see another problem with making a vertex color black. The background also gets picked up in that as well. So again, that might be something that I want to change just to make it definitely clean and maybe avoid any potential other problems with this. So I'm going to go to a bright green here. Again, make sure ID is selected and bake that. So I'll remove that mask, add mask with color selection and then pick that green. So you can see, you know, I have a few problems here. Um, there'll always be problems. You'll always get stuff wrong or forget to do something. So don't worry about that whatsoever. And most things are very easy just to quickly sort or change. All right, okay then. So we've got our different split ups here. So it's time to bake this out and use this as uh, the first pass of our textures on our trim sheet. So just make sure that you save this. So I've called this VM trim sheet A. And if we go to export textures, now what we get is normally you have Unreal Engine 4 packed and what that will give you, uh, if we go to list of exports, you'll get this, let's see, Unreal Engine 4 packed. You'll get these and the names will come out as the name of your um, asset plus the texture set plus the result. So the base color, emissive, normal and occlusion. Now what we want is we don't want to have to come in here. We don't want to have the texture set name in this because our, our maps end up messy. And if we want to do two versions of this, say if we want to change the color or some things, we want to be able to easily change the names. Now, annoyingly, you can't just change the names, um, but what we can do is create our own output template. So here I have one already made and I've called this uh, project name. So if we click on project name, you'll be able to see here, I have gotten rid of the everything but the, the end piece. So I've got base occlusion, normal emissive opacity and I put uh, the dollar sign and project in front with an underscore and what that'll do is it'll take the actual project name so what I've just saved it as which is VM trim sheet A and it'll place that as a prefix to the uh, the type of maps it is. So you can do that by selecting the Unreal Engine 4 and hit copy at the top here and put the project in there and this will be a big help for when you're trying to organize your maps as you start to burn through loads of different textures. So if I select that from my list here, project name, and then go to list of exports, we can see here, I've just got trim sheet A and then the map that I'm exporting. So I wanna make sure that I've got a textures folder and we want it as PNG. It should be set to 2K as well, which is the project size. So I'm happy about that. So we can export that and then we can open directory to see what we've got. Now we've got these three here and you'll notice we haven't got like an alpha map or anything like that. So we do need to add that as an addition, but we can come back and do that later on. So the next step before we can start applying this as a material, we just need to make sure that our model is finally uh, finished and clean. So we still have it in two parts at the moment and you could leave it like that and do the UVs like this and, and, and split them and uh, copy them over. Um, but as this is a trim sheet, we're not really worried about uh, UV space or anything like that. So we can just merge this together. So I'm going to do it piece by piece. I'm just going to grab these two here. I'm going to go up and select combine. And then I'm going to select the vertexes down the middle and merge them. An easier way to do this, if I just undo that, is to delete one side of this entirely. And then with the pivots in the correct place, which it should be because we just have these mirrored, I'm going to come back up to mesh 
and mirror and I'm going to go to the settings. I'm going to change this from instance to copy. I'm going to keep it on object, apply that. Now I want to come back to this little menu here and I want to make sure that all these settings are correct. So I do want it to merge at the border, but the merge threshold is quite high at the moment. So we can turn this down to one because that should do it. If it's too high, you'll end up getting vertexes merged together that you don't want to be merged. Okay, and again, like we did before, I'm just going to double click this edge. I'm going to control and backspace just to make sure that that's definitely merged. And obviously it is, or else that wouldn't have deleted the way it has. And I don't need that edge in the middle anyway, so I can leave that off. And then I want to do this for the rest of these as well. And I'm going to select this and delete history, freeze the transformations. And now we can apply our trim sheet to the model. So first of all, we can right click this model and go assign, uh, assign a new material. And you can pick whatever you want from this, Blin, Fong, uh, Lambert. I'm just gonna stick to Lambert. And I'm gonna name this VM Trim Sheet A. And in the color of this trim sheet, I'm going to select File. And in that file, I'm going to select our exports. And I'm gonna select Base Color. And then if we go back up to our material, we can go down to the bump map here and put another file in there. And in that file slot, we can put the normal map. Now the normal map won't display properly, but we can, if we come back up to the bump map side here, we can go use as tangent space normal. And that'll just show that bump a little bit. It doesn't render properly. And there is ways to set up the, the bump to look really nice, but um, this will do for our needs. We really don't need to see it perfectly as we'll be dropping it into UE4 anyway to check it out. And that's all that really matters. So now we can turn the texture on and we can see that working there along with them colors, which isn't very nice at all. So in the next part of this tutorial, we'll start unwrapping the faces of this machine to our new trim sheet.